All right, it looks like we are recording. We'll go ahead and get us started. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Erin Maney. I'm the Manager of Communications and Community Engagement for Open SUNY. On behalf of the Open SUNY team, I just want to welcome you to this fellow chat. The Open SUNY Fellow Chat series features Open SUNY Fellows and their work in support of our mission of networking, interaction, and excellence in online teaching and learning practices. Um, briefly, the Open SUNY Fellows are members of our SUNY campuses and friends of SUNY from partner organizations such as Excelsior College and institutions who represent extraordinary community of online practitioners. We leverage the expertise of our rich and vibrant community in this peer-to-peer -peer network through a variety of engagement opportunities, such as today's fellow chat webinar. We would encourage you to join our community. I'll be pasting links uh, in the chat as we go along for you. And the chat, or this webinar, excuse me, is being recorded and you will have access to all of the slides on the same site where you registered to attend the chat. And I'll put that link up at the end of the session so that you have that. Um, our fellow chat today features an online open free resource, the Excelsior Online Writing and Online Reading Comprehension Labs. We are joined by Francesco Frank uh, Croco, Director of the Online Writing Lab from Excelsior College, and Elizabeth Johnston, Professor of English at Monroe Community College. Frank led the Excelsior All team to in the development of the new Online Reading Comprehension Lab and has uh, contributed to the animation and gamification for the Excelsior OWL. Elizabeth is an advocate for online teaching and learning and one of our open educational resources champions. She also serves as an advisory committee member for the online reading comprehension lab and we'll talk to you about how she uses these resources in her courses. So thank you both for joining us to share this terrific resource today. Thank you. Thank you, Erin. Um, so I'm, I'm Frank Rocco, and it's a pleasure to be here to provide this um, introduction to the Online Writing Lab and the Online Reading Lab. Um, and uh, I'm glad to be doing this with Elizabeth. Um, Elizabeth Johnson and I have worked together on the OWL for, for quite a bit now. Um, so what I'd like to do is give you all a, a sort of a brief introduction to the OWL. Um, I know we only have 30 minutes. <laughs> and then um, I'm going to hand it over to Elizabeth and she can talk about some real world uses of the OWL and her experience working on the OWL. Uh, Elizabeth, I think you actually preceded me on the OWL. Um, yes. so I'm, I'm the newcomer. <laughs> uh, she's, the, she's the expert. Um, so I am the current director of the Online Writing Lab. And um, well, we can move on to that slide. That's fine. And it's, it's nice to see that everyone is... Um, and we have a broad spectrum of people from all, uh, lots of different SUNY campuses. Uh, I've worked closely with Open SUNY for a while now. Um, I, I love what you're doing. I definitely want to support it, and I definitely want to share this resource for you. Um, we have uh, an advisory board with a number of uh, faculty from SUNY on the board. And, um, and again, you know, I respect what you do very much. And I'm, I'm glad to see that there are faculty from different departments as well. Uh, one of our latest initiatives is writing in the disciplines. And uh, we're, we're very committed to, to doing that. We're working with some SUNY uh, campuses actually developing some training and writing in the disciplines, which we will make available through the OWL. Okay, so um, you can click on to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so the OWL is actually three sites in one. Um, in the title, we refer to the Writing Lab and the Reading Lab. Um, we refer to, the, you know, the Writing Lab goes by the standard moniker of, or acronym of OWL. Uh, so it's sort of a generic you know, uh, acronym for, for writing labs that happen to be online. Um, and then we, in the last two, two years ago about, we received a grant from the U.S. Department of Ed to develop really the first of its kind online comprehensive open, stress on open, uh, reading lab for college level students. Uh, there are other resources out there that the big publishers provide. There are resources, but they're paid. There are resources uh, for uh, reading skills at a lower level, uh, but really there's nothing uh, comprehensive out there for college level reading. So we built this as part of this U.S. Department of Ed grant, and uh, we call it the ORC. So, uh, you know, people ask, well, why did you call it the ORCL? Uh, it's a, <laughs> you know, it's adding that, that, that last syllable doesn't really make it nice. So we just call it the ORC. And um, so we, we have two sites here, uh, the OWL and the ORC, but they actually live on the same site. If you go to the OWL, and we, we refer to all of it as the OWL, so we use that as, as sort of, um, you know, our, our handle for the whole site. But if you go to the OWL, you'll see in purple at the top, you'll see a tab for the Writing Lab. 
you'll see a blue tab for the reading lab, and then you'll see a green tab for educator resources. And as I mentioned, we're, we're focusing a lot on educator resources lately, especially around writing the disciplines. Now, all this content is open source. It supports college level writing and reading. Um, it, it features interactive content, and that's how we're different from other writing labs that are out there. Um, we really made an investment in multimedia, in, in, our, in uh, video slideshows, uh, PDF downloads, tip sheets, things like that, quizzes, uh, and other types of activities, drag and drop, fill in the blank. Um, and they're graded, actually. They're auto-graded. Um, they provide feedback. You know, all of our question prompts, uh, we, we try to provide feedback if they get the answer wrong and so on. Um, and we, have, we do have login features so that uh, the system will remember the student's scores. So if you want to assign something for a grade, you can actually, you can actually you know, see how they've done. Um, we promote it as a free textbook alternative. Um, you know, I, I remember teaching composition, taught composition for, you know, since 2000. So, uh, in the classroom, I'd always try to find the cheapest writing handbook possible, the Diana Hacker handbook or something. Um, but you know, cheap still costs. The online writing lab is free. And as long as your students have access to the internet from a device, any device, they can use the writing lab and it covers uh, essentially the same content and more than what they'd find in a writing textbook. Um, and also in a reading textbook. We built it with WordPress, so we have access to their library of free plugins. Um, we support the open source community. We have a CC BY license. Um, we use uh, open source software to develop all our activities. It's a software called H5P. Um, all of this is responsive and mobile ready. It'll open on your phone, um, on your tablet, on your laptop. And um, we're constantly trying to improve for accessibility. We consider ourselves ADA compliant. We, 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 you know, we, we just you know, did a huge uh, review of the site. Um, and of course there are things we want to uh, you know, move forward with and improve, but um, um, it, is, it is fairly uh, accessible by my most students. So you can click on to the next one. Thank you, Aaron. So how do we build this thing? Um, it lives on a server uh, at Excelsior College, which is an online college. And that was part of why we, we built it, uh, because we don't have a brick and mortar writing center. We don't have tutors, uh, live tutors. Um, our students really needed to get the help that they needed. They needed to find it online. And, and that was one of the reasons why we decided to make it interactive multimedia so that students could engage with that multimedia rather than just simply reading text on the page. Um, you know, again, traditional writing labs tend to be sort of online supplements to residential writing centers. And we don't, since we don't have the residential writing center, the writing lab has to stand on its own. We built it with close to 3 million in grants from various sources, uh, private and federal and state funders. Um, and we built it in partnership with experts like Elizabeth. Um, Elizabeth was part of the team that helped build the original writing lab. Uh, later on, she came back to help build the reading lab. Um, we've partnered with um, several SUNY campuses, with CUNY campuses, with colleges in California and Florida and Maryland and New Jersey. Um, and in these partnerships, we, we created the content together. And then we also evaluated it together with a couple of multi-campus pilot studies. Recently, we uh, impaneled a, an advisory board for the OWL as part of an outreach project funded through the Kresge Foundation. Uh, and so we now have over 20 members uh, uh, on this advisory board. They come from colleges across the country. Um, and we, we're picking up more all the time. And what the board does is help you know, guide and direct the activities of the OWL and also uh, to help us promote the OWL and get it embedded and uh, adopted at, at more institutions. And some of those members have actually gone and um, you know, presented with us at conferences. Um, um, and next, next week, in fact, I'll be presenting with uh, Judy Salzberg from Monroe. We're presenting at uh, the College Reading and uh, Language Association conference out in Albuquerque. And then in uh, November, I'll be presenting with uh, Michael Winters from Valencia College um, at the Online Learning Consortium Conference. So we're, it's a very much a collaborative effort. You can click on the next one. Okay, so we, over the years, um, in, in, you know, the OWL goes back to around 2010, um, but over the years, we've won a number of awards from the major online, um, you know, vetters out there, the OLC, the USDLA, ITC, Newton Network. Um, so we're proud to share those awards. 
click ahead. Thank you. We've also done studies, as I've said, we've done a couple of multi-campus studies. Um, in 2013, we did a multi-state study and we found that uh, students using the OWL improved in their final grade uh, significantly and also improved in the AAC and U value rubric, which we used as our, our rubric for assessing uh, student written uh, samples. 2015, we did another multi-campus study uh, just in New York State involving the SUNYs and Excelsior. And we found that students using the argument and critical thinking section of the OWL improved in their writing skills. Clear forward. Thank you. So um, as I mentioned, the last two years, we've been doing a lot of outreach to get the word out about the OWL. A lot of money has been pumped into the OWL, um, both through funders and by Excelsior. Um, but when I, when I inherited the OWL back in, in uh, 2016, the end of 2016, uh, fall 2016, uh, we had about 13,000 users each month. Okay, and that's not a lot. Um, over the last two years, we've increased our number of monthly users by about 600%. So we're now up to 77,000 users as of September 2018. Um, and we've also increased uh, dramatically the number of sessions. So users refers to the number of unique individuals who visit the site during a one month period. Sessions is uh, you know, how many times do those users come to the site during that month? And then pages, of course, how many pages do they view? And we've seen our numbers just skyrocket over the last two years. In fact, this, this month, October, will be our best month ever. I'm sure October is always our best month of the year. And we're hoping to top 100,000 users this month. So there's definitely a lot of excitement and uh, enthusiasm about the AL as we get the word out. We've done about a dozen conferences over the last uh, year and a half. And, um, and as the word spreads, um, we're seeing that um, users are valuing the site and, and adopting it. And, and particularly faculty. I've talked to many faculty at conferences who are uh, grateful to learn about the OWL, didn't know about it previously, and are now excited to adopt it. Step forward. Okay, so um, we've also collected some data of our own. Um, we have, uh, we, we do a student survey, which we'll, we've done at Excelsior, and we'll be doing it at um, a couple of SUNY campuses, a college in uh, Tennessee, and uh, uh, potentially uh, a couple other colleges across the country through our network. Um, but the Excelsior data is in, and um, as you can see, the students you know, have a very positive view of uh, the OWL and its impact on their writing. 68% said it improved their course grade, 72% improved their writing, 80% said they could transfer what they learned to other courses, and 61% would recommend it to a friend. On the right um, are the results of a pop-up survey we run every month, and we, um, you know, every month we have over 80% satisfaction from our users. Next, please. Okay, so what is in the lab? Let's d dig in a little deeper. So first there's the OWL. Uh, the OWL has 11 sections. Uh, it covers everything from the writing process, you know, basically a, a, a process uh, approach to writing here. We start with brainstorming, pre-writing, um, you know, researching, drafting, um, revising, editing, peer review. We cover it all um, and we, dig, we, we dive deeply into things like, you know, the thesis construction, how to do introductions and conclusions, how to paragraph, pre-writing styles, and you know, there's just a lot in there. And again, it's all multimedia. We've got videos, infographics, slideshows, activities. Um, the next section, the research section covers um, how to do research, uh, different styles of research, uh, making outlines, annotated bibliographies, uh, taking notes. There's a lot in there. I'm gonna um, sweep through this a bit. So we're at, we're at about uh, 12, 15 now. Citation and documentation, your standard uh, APA, MLA, Chicago style, we cover it all. Uh, rhetorical style is one of our uh, most frequently visited sections. Uh, we, we talk about uh, the, the different writing modes, the traditional rhetorical modes, uh, uh, cause and effect papers, uh, comparison contrast. And we have samples, and those samples are very popular with our students. We have annotated sample essays, student sample essays uh, that walk through you know, how to construct these types of essays. Argument and critical thinking is also a popular one. Um, it talks about uh, how to use evidence, how to construct arguments, avoid logical fallacies. Um, I use it a lot in my classes. In fact, there's a good section on integrating sources um, and um, 
Um, again, uh, lots of multimedia. Online writing. So this is unique, I think, to our owl. Uh, it's sometimes covered in other owls, but we, we talk about things like um, um, how to create uh, digital presentations, like PowerPoints, Prezi's, um, how to do a discussion post on, on, uh, you know, on, in, in an LMS, or how to um, create a, a, a web essay or a video essay. So there's a lot of digital writing samples there. Grammar Essentials, tons and tons of content on grammar there. There's really a lot of stuff there. I mean, it really contends with uh, some of the other well-known sites online like Grammar Bytes and Grammar Girl. There's, there's a ton of stuff there. And then we also cover grammar again in the writing refresher uh, where we have modules that can be embedded in your course uh, and cover uh, specific grammar topics. We have 10 different modules, each with uh, instructional content and practice questions and a quiz at the end. Avoiding plagiarism is a whole unit, um, starts with a pretest, ends with a post-test, walks through all this content, explaining the subtleties of plagiarism. Uh, it's very good, we, we uh, require for it for some of our courses. ESL writing was actually the first section we ever built. It was built before the writing lab, it was a standalone thing. And then we uh, took it and put it in the lab. It covers a lot of the same uh, topics as the writing process, um, but geared towards that ESL audience. Writing the disciplines is a new section uh, we're branching out there and we're, we really want to support um, genre based writing focused on uh, discipline specific genres uh, that help students, you know, develop their writing in real world uh, genres that they'll need uh, for career readiness. So right now we have a test section there that's focused on uh, healthcare professions, writing for the healthcare professions. And, you know, it's a really, it's a really strong area. If you're, if you're a healthcare uh, instructor, uh, we cover six different genres. We, we explain how to write in that genre in, um, and how to read that genre as well in a short video, narrated video. And then we have tip sheets and exemplars. Uh, it's, it's really tidy and neat. And there are also activities. Paper Capers uh, is our video game. So how many writing labs have a video game? Well, we do. And uh, you can play it online from a PC or Mac. Uh, basically, um, it's a simulation where you run, the, the, the student plays an editor who runs a newspaper and has to train their uh, staff to write properly. So it sort of flips the, the, the roles a bit and they get to be the teacher. Click ahead. The reading lab. So this is again, uh, first of its kind and it covers 10 different areas. We talk about active versus passive reading. Uh, how to preview a text, um, questioning, you know, coming up with questions before, during, and after you read, uh, annotating different types of text, the importance of annotating, uh, inferencing, you know, how to tell what the author is saying when they don't say it explicitly, vocabulary strategies, we have a whole slew of different vocabulary strategies there, context clues, word clues, uh, using Kim charts and flashcards and so on, paraphrasing, how that can help improve your reading comprehension, summarizing what you've learned, and, uh, analyzing, uh, we covered a number of different topics there, including um, how to identify an author's uh, biases, prejudices, point of view, um, how to evaluate website materials, um, and how to use things like outlines and uh, concept maps and um, timelines to help um, you know, organize information and make sense of it from what you've read. Synthesizing, again, all about taking what you've read now and, and combining it with what you know and coming up with a new position. So there are actually 27 different modules strewn through these 10 areas. Each of those 27 modules has an animated instructional video that explains the content. There's a screenshot from one of the modules. Um, and then we also have a takeaway PDF that has just the main tips from, from that video. So you know, if you don't want to watch the whole video, you can just download the takeaway. And we have it in black and white and color if you want to print it. Um, and then we have, um, you know, two or three activities to practice what you've learned. So every single one of those modules has that. Um, and then of course we have transcription and so on. And uh, we're working on adding closed captioning as well. Um, educated resources. So we wanted to make sure that we were also providing resources for our teachers to help them improve the way they use the OWL. And so as you can see, we have tips on how to use the OWL in different types of classrooms, online, hybrid, flipped, whatever. Um, we have some tips on uh, using it across the disciplines. We're going to be expanding that, focusing on writing in the disciplines. Uh, we have sample course activities and syllabi, which we'll be building out with a new repository of exemplars. Uh, instructions for embedding and customizing the OWL. So these are some nifty features I'll talk about in a minute. And then, you know, a lot of different advanced ways to search the OWL, including a PDF content guide we'll call our quick reference guide. Let's click on. 
So one of the nice things about the owl that it is online and we use state of the art tools to make it easier to access the content. So if you're familiar with YouTube, you know, you can embed a YouTube video right on your page, right? So you don't have to link to it, which is nice. They don't have to leave your page. You can do the same thing with any of our activities or content or videos, everything. All of it has a little embed code in the bottom left. Click on that, copy paste the code right onto your page. Boom. Our content is now your content. It's on your page. The other nice thing about the owl, and this goes back to the owl as a textbook, you can customize the owl. If you log in, create a user account, you can actually uh, create your own owl. You go in, drag and drop content from the writing and reading labs, put it in any order you like, hit save, you get a permanent URL. It is your version of the owl. You share that URL with your students. It's forever. And the nice thing about that is that we have so much content in the owl that it, it, it's really helpful to just sort out what you want, what you don't want. And uh, it just helps the students uh, find what they need faster. Um, and again, you can create your own, you know, writing and reading textbook from our content and have it online available to all your students for free. And you can make as many outlets as you want. Click next. So what is the owl good for? Um, you know, I would use it in developmental reading and writing courses, co-requisite courses, accelerated courses, stretch courses, composition courses, basically the whole gamut of, of uh, writing and reading courses. Integrating reading and writing is easy since we have the writing and reading labs right there. Um, writing intensive courses and uh, uh, writing cross curriculum, I think would benefit from the owl as well, especially as we move into writing in the disciplines. Next. Okay, so I'm gonna hand over uh, the presentation to Elizabeth now to talk about her experience with the OWL and some of the ways she's actually used the OWL in her courses. Okay, thanks, Frank. I know we only have a few minutes, so I'm just gonna quickly talk about uh, a couple of ways, four ways that I use the OWL um, kind of broadly. So one of the things that I like most about the OWL is that you can, I use it in both my face-to-face -face and my online classes, but my students, I grade all of my work in um, our LMS and Blackboard. So my students submit all of their essays and I grade them there, which gives me the opportunity to do individualized um, feedback that uh, and very directive feedback I can so if a student is struggling with comma splices for example I can give them a direct link to um, the, the part on in grammar essentials in the owl that deals with commas um, or if they're struggling with organization or um, I want them to think more about logical fallacies again I can just give them those direct links so I really like that um, the other thing that I do is I use it in my classroom for the interactive exercises. So for example, um, I'm teaching uh, ALP, which is the Accelerated Learning Project, which is a co-requisite course between my college composition course and a developmental section. And so those students um, in particular are, uh, need a lot of help with reading. And so we use the ORC quite a bit um, I have them in class. We look at uh, the ORC together um, and then I download, you can download handouts from the ORC. So for example, um, Frank mentioned the, the reading strategies or the vocabulary strategies like Kim charts um, and concept maps. So I can download those and print those out for my students. Um, we can work on them together in class. Um, they can take them home or, and do them for homework. Um, I can assign the reading on the owl or the viewing on the owl for homework and um, have them come back in and talk about which strategies worked out for them. So that's great. Another thing that I do in class with the owl is to go again to the grammar essentials. And so a lot of my developmental students were really struggling with fragments and run-ons. So I took them to a section of grammar essentials that deals with those. Uh, and it has interactive quizzes. So as a group, we could look, um, for example, there was a paragraph um, that had a number of grammatical issues in it, missing commas or missing periods. And so as a group, you could put that up on your smart board and, and the students would tell me where to drag the comma and put it. And so the group, it's a small group, there's eight students in the developmental class, but they would decide together where the comma went, I would place it there, and then the owl would tell them if it was right or wrong, and which opened up to discussion if they were wrong, why that might be. Um, so that was great. I do a lot of, um, like with the logical fallacies, that's a lot of fun, that the little animated owl here, um, they have a version of that called Dr. Fallacy, 
uh, and, and kind of these um, cartoon images of the various logical fallacies students are often struggling with themselves or working to identify in um, essays that they're analyzing. So I pull that up in the smart board, we go through that together, or alternately I can assign it to them for homework. Um, and then we practice applying um, those, looking for those logical fallacies in, in whatever essays they're working on. Um, so I, I could go on forever about how great uh, the Al and the Orc are. I've been working with um, Frank and before that uh, Crystal Sands was the director before Frank and it's, I always say it's like the Purdue Al but on steroids because it's so robust. There's so much you can do with it. Um, one of the things that and I think it's in the educator resources and Frank might be able to men, um, clarify this are the blogs that those of us who use the Al write. And so I've written a couple of blogs about practical ways to use the OWL um, and the ORC uh, and with, link, with uh, links to the various parts of the OWL um, that I'm referencing in, in my specific classroom activities. Um, I don't want to run, for, yeah, I know we only yeah, have two minutes, so. Uh, do we have time for questions maybe? got a couple minutes. Erin, do you want to open it up to questions? Sure. I've uh, invited some questions in the chat. I haven't had any um, pop okay. up yet. I've also invited folks to share if they have any ideas maybe on how they could use the, um, the OWL or if they have already. I know a couple people said that they had. So um, great. it's kind of neat. Um, and then, you know, certainly to visit the OWL and explore themselves so that they can take a look at that. I love that you mentioned the blog, um, Liz, so that they can see some practical applications from other um, educators. That's great, too. And you can you can actually get to the blog from the OWL homepage. If you go to that top menu up top, it says uh, uh, our blog. Click on that, and that'll take you to Hoot, which is our blog. <laughs> to Hoot. Mm -hmm. A question from Maureen. Um, what would you suggest is the best way to share this to the faculty? Well, I would give them a link to the, the homepage, um, or you can, you can actually, we have a couple of informational videos that are uh, linked from the homepage, but also in the about section of the OWL. If you go to about, uh, again, up top, top menu, there's about, um, drop down menu, and you'll see informational videos. There's one for students, and there's one for faculty. And that'll give them a short introduction to the OWL, and uh, they can get using it as soon as they, as soon as they want. That would be great to include that in any newsletters that campuses maybe do, or if they have a tips and tricks sheet or, you know, any kinds of things like that that they send out to their faculty. It's great. I think, too, um, uh, any chance I get in a department meeting that, where they'll give me three minutes to get up in front of everybody and pull it up, I show it. And every time I show it, because there's so many things that faculty are always thinking about and so many resources. And so I know if I just mention it to them, they might forget about it. So when I pull it up, every single time I do that, at least another faculty member says to me afterwards, I'm so glad you did that. I had forgotten about it. Now I'm mm -hmm. using it in my class and I love it. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, another good question here, too, is um, if you could just share a bit about the interactive activities. How is student participation saved, stored, shared, that type of thing? Sure. So it is, if the student creates an account and, and signs in and then takes an activity, uh, the website will actually save their results. It'll show their score how much time they spent on the activity, when they took it. Now, we don't have robust LMS features where you can assign that student to a teacher and whatnot, but the student could, if they wanted to report, you know, a number of activity results to you, they could simply take a screenshot of that and send it to you. And it's a very fast way for them to show you what they've done. We also have, um, at the bottom of every activity, we have instructions for how to save as PDF and then, you know, email to the instructor. And we have uh, instructions for each type of, of uh, browser for how to do that. So those, those are sort of our workarounds for the student to be able to report uh, how they did on the activity. Um, but as far as the, the you know, how this, what the system saves, it saves those things. It saves the score, time spent, and the date of the activity. And I have, I have my students, some of those activities, they can download their results to their computer. That's, and so I have right. them upload their results into Blackboard just to show me that they did it for homework. Mm -hmm. 
Terrific. All great ideas. I want to thank you both uh, for sharing with us today and for your willingness to represent our open SUNY community. I did uh, post a link in the chat for others who might be interested in sharing something that they're doing or a resource that they have. Uh, there's a proposal link there. And we will be sharing the recording and the slides on the same site where you registered by the end of the day tomorrow. We just need to process the, the video and all of that. So there's a bit.ly layer where you can get that information. We also have um, past fellow chats from um, uh, previous years. If anyone is interested in taking a look, there's a link there to see some of our other engagements. So we thank you for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you at another virtual event uh, soon. So thank you again. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron.